Joshua 22 verse 5. We have uh, in this verse a very, uh, very helpful uh, verse indeed, which reads, But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Just noticing as I meditate upon this verse, um, three main points. We have the command, the context, and what I'm calling the comprehensiveness. Notice the command. It says, but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law. And not only is there a command here, the manner of the command. We're exhorted to take diligent heed. It says, in the uh, margin, be very careful. Be very careful to do the commandment and the law. So we are to be diligent. And as I'm reading at the moment, the biography, the diary of uh, David Brainerd, I'm reminded of what diligence really is. Real biblical diligence. Real devotional diligence. Uh, to God. So this is not an optional extra for the Christian. It is what we are to be, what we are to do, and how we're to do it. Take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law. That's the command. And then secondly, we have the, the context, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you. The context is the, is the word of God. We are to be diligent with regard to the word, with regard to what God has given us through his servants. We're not to dream up our own ideas of what diligence is. We're not to develop our own religion, our own philosophies, but we are to stick carefully to the word, what God has given to us. And then in the third part, we have what I'm calling the comprehensiveness. And there's a five-fold description of what it is, this diligent obedience, what this diligent obedience is. First of all, it says to love the Lord your God. Any Christian service without a love to God is meaningless. We must love him. Martin Luther realized his great problem when he not only did not love the Lord, but felt that he could not love the Lord. So we are commanded to love God. It's not something that is a suggestion. We are commanded to love him, to desire him, to, to want him above all else. As the psalmist says, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there's none upon earth that I desire beside thee. And then secondly, the second uh, part of this comprehensive, diligent obedience is to walk in all his ways, not just some, not the ones we like, not the ones we prefer, but we're to walk in all his ways. One of the great problems with the modern church is a lack of walking in the ways of God. We're to walk in all his ways. Thirdly, we're to keep his commandments the law is despised by many we know we're not justified by the law we're not made right with god by the law but because we have been made right by the gospel by jesus christ now we are to live if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit and there's a, a separation between the the spirit and the word which is wrong we're filled with the Spirit when we're enabled to walk and to keep God's law, to keep his commandments. And then a very personal emphasis in the fourth clause, and to cleave unto him, this personal taking hold of God, not being satisfied with outward form, with performance, with works, but taking hold of God, cleaving unto him. And then fifthly, 
to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. We're called to be servants of God. We're called to love him, to serve him, to obey him, to walk with him, to cleave unto him with all our heart and with all our soul, everything that is in us. The great calling of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. May this be our desire. May this be our longing to love the Lord our God, to take diligent heed, to be very careful to obey him, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, to serve him, to love him. May God grant it for his glory and for the good of our souls. Amen.